Welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. I'm joined on the podcast today by James Brewer, author of the novel Blood on the Cross Ties, The Florida Chautauqua Murders, the first book in the three-volume Choctaw Parker Mystery Adventure Series. James, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. I've been looking forward to talking to you. Absolutely. Well, if someone hasn't yet heard about your novel, Blood on the Cross Ties yet, how would you describe the novel? It's a, it's a Victorian-era historical novel. It's the story of a half-white, half-Choctaw railroad investigator uh, who works for each of the three great railroad barons of Florida. First, William Chipley in the first book, Blood on the Cross Ties. And in the second book, he'll work for Henry Flagler uh, of Flagler University and the uh, Gulf Coast Railroad. And in the third book, uh, he'll be working for Henry Plant, for whom Plant City was named. And do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to writing the novel? You know, I moved to Florida about eight years ago. I'm retired military. I spent 30 years with the Army. And uh, I moved to Florida about eight years ago. And I knew I wanted to start a new series, but I couldn't quite figure out how I wanted to approach it. I knew I loved historical mysteries, and I wrote five in a previous series that were set in the uh, Mississippi-Ohio River Valleys during the golden age of steamboats. So when I got down here, I started thinking, what would I like to write about? And I came across the idea of, of the role of the railroad in opening up Florida to, to tourism and settlement. And I thought, well, that might be a pretty good approach. Uh, and that's how I initially came up with the idea of the three-book series. Well, as you um, as you mentioned about the history of the the railroads, and I know the first book is set in Florida in the late eighteen hundreds. What kind of research did you do as you were writing the novel? Oh, that's a great question. To me, the research is is as much fun, if not more fun, than the actual writing. Uh, I've written on uh, nonfiction works before, and I've always taken research very seriously. And for for example, the first book, Blood on the Cross Ties. I set it in the Florida Panhandle uh, uh, between Pensacola and Defuniac Springs and over to Tallahassee, where uh, Choctaw Parker is working for William Chipley, who built the first railroad across the peninsula. And the research I did for that was to talk to local historians and uh, people who led local historical societies in Walton County and Pensacola and Tallahassee. I would go to the ground. Anytime I write a story, I try to go to the location. So if I tell you what it was like for Choctaw Parker to walk two miles up the track from the Argyle rail stop to the site of a train robbery, it's because I was on that track and walking that spot. Because I can, at the right time of morning, at the right time of year, so I can feel the direction of the sun on my face. And I, I really take my ser research very seriously. Well, can you tell the listeners about your protagonist, Choctaw Parker? Choctaw Parker is a man who walks a tightrope between two cultures while never fully feeling fully at home in either one. Uh, Choc the main character in this story is the son of a Choctaw man and a French-Canadian woman. Choctaw Parker is, is born in the late 1830s. Um, and after several years, he's educated in an Indian school in Kentucky. And after the, and when the Civil War breaks out, he sides with the Confederacy. As he says in the story, we looked at the Union, but we've been lied to by so many times by the federal government, we thought we'd throw our lot in with the other side. <laughs> so he, he fought for the Confederacy, as many uh, Choctaw and Cherokee did during the Civil War. And after the war... Uh, uh, he's raising his own family. He has a daughter and a wife, and but yellow fever takes the life of his wife and his daughter and leaves him kind of at unsure what to do with the rest of his life. Uh, he gets a job as a track walker, the person who moves between one rail stop to the other on a regular basis, checking the track for defects or loose gravel or loose rails. But he was so diligent in his efforts that they noticed that, and they asked him to investigate some small crimes that were taking place in the rail yards, and that led to more investigations until such time as, as he was placed in charge of a major investigation for William Chipley in his first story, Blood on the Cross Ties. 
That's great. Well, can you tell us about your original writing journey that led you to writing your first novel? Oh, wow. We got to go back a ways for that. Uh, because when, that was when I wore a younger man's clothes, Jeff. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I became a writer first um, around 1980. And I began to do magazine article work, uh, nonfiction work in areas that interested me or something that I had some experience in. And I, as I, my army career developed, I realized if I wanted a second job to make a little extra income, uh, I couldn't really have, take a night job at Lowe's because they don't like it when you disappear and you can't tell them where you're going or how long you'll be there or when you'll be back. So to have a supplemental income, I, I became a photo journalist, a magazine journalist. I uh, taught myself black and white film, pretty, uh, black and white ph photography, and, and and wrote stories for like 15 years for magazines. And then about early 1990s, I decided to do a nonfiction book, and I did that book, and it turned out well. Uh, it was called The Danger from Strangers, and it it called upon uh, 30 years of teaching personal protection, self-defense, both in the Army and out. I did that, and then after that, I... Uh, Got the idea I wanted to write fiction. And so I started my first series called the Luke Williamson Macy Baldridge Riverboat Mystery Series for Walker and Company out of New York. And I wrote those from 1995 all the way through 2000. And that's how I got into writing fiction. Um, and I based it on my, some of my family history. I'm a third generation Mississippi River family. And uh, some of the stories my mother would tell me about all the things that happened on the river. So I set my first series in the 1870s uh, along the Mississippi and Ohio rivers during the golden age of steamboats. Well, what was your writing process when you were working on your latest novel, Blood on the Cross Ties? Did you plan the novel before you began writing it? Or do you just have a, a basic idea and dive into the story? How does that work for you? Well, I, I teach composition and rhetoric at a local college as an adjunct, and I always tell my students, how can you write a good introduction to something you haven't written yet? And so I urge them to write the body of a paper and then go back and see how they might introduce it. Uh, what I do when I write fiction is I come up with a general idea of a story. For example, there will be a murder because it's a mystery. You got to have a murder, right? So there's going to be a murder, and so there's going to be uh, a, a protagonist, and then there's going to be uh, the culprit, and there are going to be all these other peripheral characters. And I do a lot of what I call mapping. And I'll draw little circles and draw lines linking characters to each other, who knows who, who's motivated by what. Uh, and I get a general idea of the story. Uh, I, I decide the time period, in this case, uh, the 1880s for the blow and the cross ties. Uh, I looked, as I said earlier, about the general theme. It's going to be a three-book series. I'm looking at the overall themes across all three books. And so I knew in the first book I wanted to write about uh, Choctaw Parker and William Chipley. And in the second one, I wanted to write about Choctaw Parker and Henry Flagler. And in the third one, I am in the process of writing about Choctaw Parker and Harry Plant. So once I know that overall picture in a three-book series, then I definitely uh, can begin to shape my story. Uh, I'm not one of these people who believes you got to write something every day and puts myself on a hard schedule like that. I oftentimes let my research help develop the story. That's great. Well, what writing advice would you offer for those who are working on their own stories or novels? First of all, above all things, tell a good story. And what I mean by that is, if, if, if you just do research and write what you found, that's basically a history textbook, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so there's got to be more to it than that. If you're going to do that, there's nothing wrong with it. We need great history textbooks, but that's what that is. If I just wrote about William Chippy building the railroad from Pensacola to Tallahassee, that'd be a, probably a pretty good historical uh, nonfiction piece. But to write fiction, you've got to build a story around that. So what I use is I use the, the information from the time period. I use actual real characters in my stories. I try to portray them realistically. If I tell you who the sheriff of Walton County is in 1885, then that's who it was. Uh, that's what I do. I, I try to, to, to blend those real characters like William Chipley in with the fictional characters, treating them fairly. Um, the advice I would give to others is have a story. 
I've met a lot of people over the years in writing and teaching writing, and everybody's got a pretty good story about Uncle Ned and all the interesting things Uncle Ned did. But that doesn't necessarily make it a story. Uh, you, you got, it's got to have a beginning, middle, and the end. It, it's, got to, it's got to appeal to people on many different levels. It must be surrounded by other characters, uh, uh, good characters that engage the readers. One of the things Publishers Weekly said about my work was, was to say good things about the character development. Uh, and I really I write a background. I write a backstory on every character. Uh, for example, to digress slightly, right now I've in mind a new book, a single standalone book, about a, a World War II veteran right after World War II who had been captured and imprisoned in the Chinese prison camp. And afterwards, he was put in a mental institution for a year. And uh, he's released and he's trying to make his way in life, dealing with the PTSD of the time, although they didn't call it that then. So what I'm doing to write the backstory of this character is reading all about those aspects, reading about the flying tigers in China where he was a mechanic, reading about what it was like in a mental institution when somebody was being treated at that time. Uh, and reading about that helps to develop. I think all writers need to read, do good research and help develop because they'll get ideas about characters that would never occur to you otherwise. That's great. I I know that you just said that you're I'm already thinking about uh, this, the novel that you're going to write after the third Choctaw Parker novel. Have you started thinking at all about another series? No, because and the reason, <laughs> the reason, the reason is this. I, uh, I don't see this novel I'm envisioning as a, as a series. I see this as a right. standalone. Uh, as for Choctaw Parker, we're going to wait and see how the first three books do. I mean, I'm not opposed to doing another two books in the series. I did five books in the Riverboat series, but I only contracted to do three initially, and I've kind of taken a wait. Let's wait to see how it's received, what kind of feedback we get, and then maybe do the other uh, another in the series. But I, I do like to write series because I like to, to have the, the bandwidth, if you will, you need to develop and show movement in the character. Sure. Well, what writers do you enjoy reading? Okay, I'm going to say something that your readers are going to think is very selfish. I read mostly nonfiction because I spend most of my free time doing research. And I let that develop my stories. You see, if I have X amount of free time in a given day, I'd rather spend that writing my own work than reading someone else's. Oh my gosh, isn't that isn't that selfish? <laughs> I, but it's my my mother used to say the truth only hurts if it should. Do I <laughs> do I look at other fiction writers sometimes and read some of their work to see how they handle characters? Sure, I do, but I don't have a particular favorite. Uh, Elvis, when he was asked how he sings, he says, "Well, I don't sound like nobody." Well, I, I'm not trying to sound like anybody or be like anybody. Uh, that's why when I write nonfiction, for example, about the Civil War. I don't write the 17th study of Pickett's Charge. I pick something nobody's written about before. Research that or write about that. So that, that, I know that sounds selfish, but that's kind of the way I am. Sure. Well, on that note, what nonfiction books have you read recently that you enjoyed? Wow. Uh, I'm reading uh, my friend Cy Harrington's book right now on uh, um, veterans of the the, the Navy and the Civil War uh, on the Confederate side, a massive volume. I just got in my hands a couple of weeks ago when I went to see him. He's an old paratrooper buddy of mine from 30 years ago, and uh, we linked up again after a long time. I'm reading that right now. I'm re I read the biography of Henry Plant uh, in preparation for the third book. I read a couple of biographies of, uh, of Flagler mm -hmm. uh, in preparation for the second book. I... Uh, I read about uh, and did some research with uh, the folks at Western Florida University on William Chipley and his railroad. That's the kind of material that I find myself reading. I read uh, 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 martial arts books and self-defense because I've been involved in that in a long time. And I weave some aspects of that in the stories that I write. Well, what kind of uh, martial arts do you train? Uh, this year marks my 52nd year. I started in 1969 in, in a Korean system known as Hapkido. 
And I, then I trained for a while in Japanese, a Shorai Goju style. And after that, I spent about 15 or 20 years in Taekwondo. And after that, I, I trained in Wing Chun, which is a Chinese system. And I currently train a couple of days a week with a school here locally in Central Florida where I live. So this has been a big part of my life. As I, I think I said in one of my, my notes on the, my website, anything, Jeff, that you've been doing in your life longer than you haven't been doing it is a way of life, whether you like it or not. That's whether it's good or bad, right? So <laughs> it, it, it's a way of life for me. That's very true. Well, where can people find you online if they want to learn more about you and your books? My website is jamesdbrewerwriter.com. Just all one line there, jamesdbrewerwriter.com. And I have uh, a number of uh, of pages set up in there. Uh, I have um, links to the fiction, links to the nonfiction, and I've posted a serial of a, of a nonfiction work I've, I've been working on there and the people can read as well. That's great. Well, again, we've been speaking to James Brewer, author of the novel Blood on the Cross Ties, The Florida Chautauqua Murders, the first book in the three-volume Choctaw, Choctaw Parker Mystery Adventure Series. The novel is available now, so go buy a copy. And James, thanks for doing this interview. Jeff, I appreciate the chance to talk to folks like you, and I appreciate your listeners giving me their time. Absolutely.